As far as estimating the winds, this pamphlet again has the scale there to help estimate winds. If you've got wind measuring equipment, all the better. We'd like to hear about that. Ideally, the best reports would come directly into us, but we also want to caution that in the case of, of storms that look like you're, you're observing a tornado or what may become tornadic, it's best to contact local dispatch with regard to that. Call 911, let them know what you see, because it's the local officials that have the siren capabilities. We at the Weather Service do not. Uh, so make that call there first and then get the information into us. A lot of different ways by that information coming into us, whether it be through amateur radio operators, there's a couple of internet websites. If you'd like to join our eSpotter group, become part of our, our spotter database, you can sign up at the eSpotter website that is also included on this pamphlet here. If you simply want to send an email to our webmaster, that's fine too. On the front page, down at the bottom is a link to that webmaster. You click on it, go ahead, and it'll just open up an email window. Report to us what you're seeing, what's taking place, what time it is and where it occurred. And if you're taking some pictures of it, like a great shell cloud or a great wall cloud or some damage that may have occurred, you can attach those to that email and send it into us in real time or, or again after the fact if you want to be safe. Also, you can contact us by phone and oftentimes that's great too because we're never overwhelmed with information. We can never get enough information. So uh, again, all this information is contained on this pamphlet here. Regarding the amateur radio operations, they're literally the backbone of, of Skywarn Storm Spotter operations for the Weather Service nationwide. And we serve 39 counties across central Indiana, and there's radio operations in each and every one of those counties. And they typically will have someone that, that coordinates those radio activities. The information is funneled into that person who then relays that report up to ham radio operators that are sitting side by side with us at our office. Regarding the eSpotter, again, that website's located here. So if you'd like to sign up with us as an eSpotter, that'd be great. There's a report form at the eSpotter website that just, just drop down menus, you fill out the information, you push it out the door, it sounds an alarm in our office, it lets us know here comes a report from a trained spotter. Pictures literally do tell a thousand words, so if you've got some pictures that you've taken, great. We're in fact starting a, a web-based gallery at our website here, not too long down the road in time once we get rid of, rid of a lot of other headline stuff that we've got going on right now, but there will be a, a repository there that will the pictures that you all send and we'll have it available on our website and for for those pictures that are really good that have good training potential we'll be including those in, in next year's spotter show so we'll do a lot like we have here right now we'll tie that picture to a radar image and the associated with it that resulted and you guess us uh, what's taking place here what would you be reporting rotating wall cloud anything else A little bit of debris there. Is it spiraling upward as a result of a vertical circulation, tornado development, or might it be a horizontal roll that might have been associated with <coughs> rear flank downdraft, causing the horizontal roll of debris? So, a lot of things to be watching for. But as you're doing so, again, always keep in mind your safety. That's number one. Spotting from a safe location. If that means spotting a home, that's fine with us. We all live in different places, so that's a lot of different locations where reports can come from. So that's, that's still good. When you have to take shelter inside on the lowest floor available to you, in an interior hallway, closet, bathroom, or in the basement if you have one, that's your safest course of action. For those of you who are out in vehicles, try to get out of the path of the storm. If it's a big, long squall line, you're not going to be able to get out of the path. In those circumstances, just make sure you're not parked where trees can fall on you or power lines can fall on you. And probably point your, your nose to the wind so that uh, your car is not likely to get rolled. Um, if it's a tornado that's approaching your area, you might be able to drive out of the path of that. I'm not sure that the county roads around here are as nice as the county roads up our way where you got to every mile you've got north, south, east, west access out of there. And I don't think that's true around here. So it's a little bit tougher. So that's why it's all the more important that you know your roads well, you know where you're at in relationship to those roads, and you know where you're at in relationship to the storm, so you know what to be anticipating. Keep in mind, all storms contain lightning. If you can hear thunder, potentially in, in the range of being struck by lightning. And lightning's our nation's number two weather killer. In this case here, this one literally struck right outside this guy's house. Now this is some place down, I think in Australia, <laughs> but nonetheless they've got thunderstorms like we do. So inside a sturdy building, away from the windows, building which has wire here plumbing, 
that can carry the current to ground is your safe place if you're in your vehicle, a hardtop vehicle. If it were to be struck by lightning, that metal shell that surrounds you is your source of protection. Our number one weather killer is floods and flash floods. Your vehicle becomes buoyant, and the sideways force of the water will literally push it off the roadway. So find alternate routes to travel. And I know there are some low water crossing areas in, in parts of Monroe County, so you've really got to be cautious. We issue multiple types of warnings, uh, from river flood warnings to countywide flood advisories to flash floods. It, it depends a lot on the circumstance. In the case of the big rivers like the White River, it doesn't flow through here, so we don't issue a flood warning for that. But what we will do is we have a significant rainfall over a short period of time where river and or stream levels are rising quickly and over roadway surfaces more than likely will issue the flash flood warning. For longer durations, slowly rising water levels, countywide flood advisory might be more appropriate just to let folks know, hey, you know what, there might be some nuisance water that you've got to mess with, but maybe not necessarily life-threatening. I'm not going to run this video through its entirety, but you can see here there is water rushing over the roadway. This stream is up and out of its banks and, and actually literally crossing this roadway here. In the course of the, this video clip that runs several minutes long, it will literally wash out this road here. It will disappear. Um, as you can see here, the culvert that runs underneath the roadway here is literally gobbling up everything that's flowing towards it. <laughs> Now this one here, not a flash flood scenario by any means. In right. fact, this is a really strange scenario that's taking place here. Big hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a sinkhole. But who would have known that that little puddle was like eight feet deep. Oh, wow. Now this is, is more true of what you don't want to be doing. <laughs> And this guy here tried a similar circumstance and he didn't make it. His vehicle got washed off the road. Fortunately, he was rescued. Goodbye. How far away from that area? Uh, beyond that tree line, there was a, a bridge over the railroad tracks, and his car kind of oh. got butted up against the bridge. Oh. Yeah, this is the problem that you can run into. You have no idea the condition of the road surface underneath or whether or not there's even a roadway that's there. <laughs> Or in this case here, where these Mexicans are across the Rio Grande and trying to make it to the USA, <laughs> they did not make it. This was some flash flooding that occurred in, in Colorado, and just an example of what fast moving water can do. Oh, wow. So it's, it's just important that, that when you encounter water that's over the roadway, just find another route to travel. In. And just be extra careful at night, because <laughs> oftentimes it's really hard to see water over the roadway, and, and let alone the depth of that water. So, avoid water. So briefly with regard to this, what constitutes a flash flood? Rushing one over roads, yeah, that sounds good. Swollen streams or drainage ditches, well, that might be more of a flood advisory scenario, at least based on that description. Rapidly entering water into homes and businesses, you know what, that's probably a flash flood. I mean, you're, you're threatening life and property now. So the correct answer in this case would be A and C, or D in this case here. And notice what happens again in this case, this culvert and this little barn that's washing downstream. 